What's up, you guys? Sean Ross, managing editor, FightfulMMA.com, FightfulWrestling.com. We're live here on YouTube.com slash Fightful. This will go up later at YouTube.com slash Fightful MMA Boxing. But hey, all you got to do to make sure you see it live, Fightful.com. It'll stream right there live on the site. Man, we've got plenty to get into. This will be a bit of an abbreviated show, although we will cover UFC Newark in full on the Fightful MMA podcast, Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern, with Showdown Joe Ferraro. But if you all don't mind, leave us a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to our other channel. Let's go ahead and talk about UFC Fight Night Newark. Uh, this was a fun show. Uh, you can say what you want about that main event and how you feel about Colby Covington. Man, there was a lot going on today. And uh, if you weren't a part of our live discussion, you missed out. 300 plus comments over there for an afternoon UFC show with not a lot of buzz. You had Miranda Granger defeating Hannah Goldie. Miranda Granger took this fight on short notice, really swept the fight. Uh, I would like to see Goldie and Granger in action against someone else for a little bit more of an accurate representation of what they can do. Both of them fighting a weight division up. Granger on a couple weeks' notice. Uh, she looked very good, though, she being Granger. Claudio Silva defeated Cole Williams via rear naked choke. Uh, so this show, man, the theme of this show were sons of bitches getting choked out. Man, what was up today? Now, to be fair, there were a couple of spots where you couldn't have really helped uh, some of these. And Claudio Silva had uh, had Cole Williams face down or I, th I think it was uh, the Pudilova fight. My God, there were, I think, five choke finishes here. But Claudio Silva uh, managed to win this one. He's, he's a seasoned 36 years old. He'll be 37 next month, and he is sitting at 5-0 and in the UFC. So you got to watch for him. And he beat a guy who missed weight. So, I mean, I'm looking at, at Claudio Silva, and I'm looking. He had a performance of the night against Nordin Taleb last year. And this year alone, he's 2-0. and uh, But we're starting to see him get back into the fold. I mean, a lot of you all may not remember this, but Claudio Silva took off three and a half, four years. I think it was three and a half years. He beat Leon Edwards, who is atop things right now. And he took three and a half years off that really in his early to mid-30s, which he couldn't do. And since then, Leon Edwards has won like 9 of 10 with his only loss being to Kamara Usman. So that's something to look out for. And you get Claudio Silva back in action. He's won three fights since he came back last year. Yeah, I think you give him a top 15 guy now. He, he ended this very quickly. And um, man, you, you wonder what would have happened if, if he didn't miss all that time. Man, that's such a bummer. I mean, Silva was supposed to fight, uh, to, I think, he was supposed to fight Taleb originally in 2015. And then he was supposed to fight uh, Seer Baharazada in 2016. And uh, yeah, it just, it just didn't work. He had a bunch of injury issues and didn't happen for him. I'll tell you who it happened for. Lauren Murphy. Man, she did great. Uh, she looked wonderful in this fight against number 12, Mara Romero Barreda. Uh, she continues to keep herself relevant in this division. She's number 10. She's won two out of three. She had dropped that fight against Ajara Eubanks over a year ago and came back 14 months later. And most people who can't put piece two wins in a row together in the UFC don't hang around in that top 10 division. She did and will. And you can say what she, you want about consistency, uh, she's at least winning some fights these days uh, at flyweight. She's two and one good finish by her uh, she really, really set up with that, that knee. It looked really great. Matt Schnell is somebody we all got to look out for now. Matt Schnell in this flyweight division uh, pleads for people to pay attention to the flyweights. He's won four fights in a row. He stepped into the UFC and lost two fights. He was on the tough, uh, tough tournament beat Matt Rizzo, lost to Tim Elliott, then stepped in and lost two fights in a row. He lost one at Bantamweight. He lost one at Flyweight. And since then, he's not lost any. 
He's had a great streak over the last two years, uh, fighting between Bantamweight and Flyweight. Fought Luis Smoka at Bantamweight earlier this year uh, to kind of meet him there. But a couple finishes back-to-back, a triangle choke. And he put out Jordan Espinoza real quick. I didn't think Espinoza would have tapped that quickly to that. But, I mean, what, what more can you do there? What more can you do? It's just, it was locked in. And Matt Schnell says that he deserves a top 10 opponent, top opponent. He does. I would give Matt Schnell Alexander Pantoja next. Antonina Shevchenko. First off, I want to talk about the dedication of Valentina Shevchenko. In one week, she has a UFC championship fight against Jessica Andraj. But a week away from that, she is on another continent. Remember, this fight's in Uruguay. She's on another continent, cornering her sister and doing some promo work for UFC. Your fave would never. Antonina Shevchenko looked very good. Uh, Pudilova being able to escape one of the arm bars that she escaped was very impressive. This looked good, but that rear naked choke got locked in, and Pudilova was face down. And you really couldn't see where it was, and... Her being let it go a little too long. It, it was there were some there were some rough ref calls here, but Antonina Shevchenko keeps herself relevant. She'll probably pop back up in that top fifteen division, uh, but she looked really really good and needed to here because I mean even though Valentina is a successful one. Oops, sorry for hitting my mic there. Antonina Shevchenko is the older sister, a little more long in the tooth than Valentina. Not as skilled as Valentina. Still skilled, not as skilled. Nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with being Ozzy Canseco. You're not going to be as known known as well as as Jose, but hey, you might make it to the big still. Mickey Gall defeated Salim Tuhari. Before this fight, they were talking about Gall's cardio. And he won this fight 29-28 all across. And they were like, oh yeah, his sister got him off his butt and started running. That's not promising. That ain't a good thing. Not not good at all. He won the unanimous decision. He called out Diego Sanchez, who already beat him. No, we ain't doing that one again, buddy. We ain't doing that one. Kennedy in Chekuwu defeated Darko Stasic via unanimous decision. But let's be real. He sacrificed his nutsack. His nutsack to win this fight. And that he did. His balls are cooked. R.I.P. Kennedy and Chekawu's balls. Woo! He's probably losing this fight if it wasn't for him getting kicked in the dick over and over again. What are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? I know what you all are going to do. Go watch Scott Holtzman and Dong Hyun Ma. Boy, this fight was good. This fight was fun. This fight was a blast. This is what you want. Like, here's the thing. Uh, Dong Hyun Ma missed weight, had to give up 20% of his of his purse. I don't know if he'll be eligible to win fight of the night now as a result, but man, that was good. That was good. And even if he's not, give that money to Scott Holtzman. Scott Holtzman did great. Scott Holtzman has been in the UFC for three and a half years, and it's only his second finish. He's only started finishing fights in the last year. Uh, Well, no, 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 no. He he finished one in 2015. His debut was then. Sorry, I was thinking Drew Dober was his debut fight. But, I mean, Scott Holtzman is a fella who was making, at least at at the last point of his disclosed payout was making oh gosh i want to say like 33 to show 33 to win he deserves that 50k and he probably deserves that additional 50k that would have went to dong hyun ma this was awesome just them slugging it out uh, a real ball to watch i mean the thing is with scott holtzman um you know it's at least going to the end of the second round no matter what he has (laughs) in the ufc Every single fight of his has at least ended the second round. This one never went to the third, but his only other two finishes were that Alan Patrick KO uh, with the the elbows. 
that were deep into the third. And then he had the submission that was about halfway into the third. Man, he looked really good too. Uh, I like Rob Amon's uh, suggestion to Holtzman versus McDessie. That's a hell of a fight. I like that one. He's won four out of his last five. He's looked really, really good over the last two and a half years in particular uh, since the Swanson Lobov fight in Nashville. Uh, that would, I think I think McDessie would be the right one for him. Uh, here's to hoping he gets that bonus as well. Gerald Mearshart defeated Trevin Giles via a guillotine choke. You know, I thought Trevin Giles was going to walk away with this when Gerald Mearshart, uh, for all intents and purposes, was fighting for his job. Trevin Giles, not so much. Uh, I, I, I know he's out of legacy and all that, but... He came into the UFC with such a bang. He had that light heavyweight debut where he knocked out Bokhnovich and he, he beat Antonio Brago Nato uh, later that year. But then he missed a year and a half. And I don't know what happened in that year and a half for him. But it was just, it was not good. It was not good. And you know, there's all this talk about the Herb Dean stoppages, man. I I think, especially considering who was on the card, that Herb Dean was like, man, I really don't want the highlight on me for bad stoppages. And the unfortunate reality is there were a lot of them from him. Cheers. A big jug of water. You know, it's unfortunate because Herb Dean is a very tenured ref. And the thing is, man... Trevin Giles was tapping, and Herb Dean couldn't see it. And the you got to put the hands in the eyesight of the ref. And, and no, 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 I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about uh, the fighter. The fighter did what he could. He tapped on one side. He tapped on the other side. He was about probably about to start tap dancing in the cage. Herb Dean was watching the choke and didn't watch the hands. And you, Come on, man. You can't do that. I I mean, I've seen it. I saw as many bad stoppages tonight as I have most of 2019 in the UFC. Now, here's the thing. Unless this choke is on for a, a stupid, stupid long amount of time, you're not in any real risk of danger. None of these people that were choked out and it was late were in any real immediate danger of brain damage or anything like that. Now, meanwhile, if you eat about three or four extra punches, you're in you're in danger of damaging some things. You broke your break your nose, you break your orbital, you could break any number of things. You could, uh, quite frankly, screw up your brain for for life. Nobody that got choked out tonight was on. Like a lot of people have this weird misconception that. Oh, it's, it's not that hard to, to strangle somebody. It's very hard to strangle somebody. And I'm not speaking from experience, uh, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm a noted fan of Investigation Discovery, and you hear these people that are like, oh, I accidentally strangled her. No, you didn't, homeboy. That takes a long time. It takes you long enough to realize what you're doing, probably be like, God damn, this is taking an awful long time. Why does it take this long? And then by then, you had gone too far, I would imagine. None of these people were in that danger. It was a few seconds. Uh, extended, yes. Dangerous, no. Should it have happened, no. But look up and down this show. You got people not, not being seen going out. You've got low blows. Man, it was the Wild West out here. And I don't want to say the Wild West because um, – Gary Copeland, who, you know, I, I can tell you our fight team has had some issues here and there with his refing here in Kentucky, but I just, I just like, <laughs> I look at, at what he did in this fight and I think he did, I think he did well. I mean, when I'm talking about Copeland and the Ncheku Wu fight, I don't see him as really screwing up that bad. I think that he did what he had to do. Darko kept kicking the guy in the balls, but Herb Dean's night was not a good one, man. Not a good one. Nasrat Hakparas defeated Joe Kim Silva via KO. 
Hot Paras wouldn't call anybody out after the fight, but hey, man, he's a he's a soon to be twenty four year old prospect who's won three in a row and needed to finish because anybody who followed what he was doing on the regional circuit in, in Germany and and heard about this guy that was putting people out within a couple minutes at at lightweight and welterweight all over the place. He was really versatile. He came in. He lost to Marcin Held. Didn't look impressive in doing it. He beat Jacasey. He beat Goatee. And the, the Goatee fight was real good. It was real good. But now he's stateside, and the first impression he makes stateside is, is knocking out Joe Kim Silva. And Joe Kim Silva ain't, ain't an easy out, my guys. He had won four out of his last five in the UFC before this fight. Uh that, that great fight against Jared Gordon where he knocked out Jared Gordon and Hot Karras put him out, man. Uh, do I think that a top 15 is happening for Hot Karras? Nah, that's too deep of a division. We're probably not getting that. But um, still, you'll, you'll look at that and you're like, okay, good for him. A good win. A reminder, guys, leave a thumbs up on this. Subscribe. This will be up on the MMA channel later along with some clips as well. Um, main event time uh, well actually no co-main event time Jim Miller defeated Clay Guida it was amazing that this fight had never happened see I grew Clay Guida and Jim Miller in there with the, the guys like Joe Lozon and and Diego Sanchez and gosh who else there's all these people it, Kiesa for a while uh, Benio Dariush is going to get to that point Melvin Gillard for a while. Uh, Charles Oliveira was there for a while. T-Bow was there for a while. Just these guys that were all around for, for like a decade, it seems, and all fought each other. But we had never had a Jim Miller versus Clay Guida fight. And goddamn, was it good, man. Uh, Guida had won three of four leading into this fight. And Jim Miller had won two out of three. And, man, the guy had been fighting with Lyme disease for a while, lost four in a row, and has turned his career around. I mean, there were two points. Like, I, I remember promote or not promoting, but uh, the week of UFC 200 was when we launched Fightful. Cheers. And he was fighting Gomi. And Gomi sucked at that point. And I remember thinking, man, this is UFC's way of getting him a win because he had lost four out of five. The only person he had beaten that period was Danny Castillo with split decision. And he beat Gomi. And he went on this nice little stretch in 2016, but then 2017 happened. And he lost four fights in a row. He lost four fights in 14 months. And uh, it was against real good competition too. Poirier, Pettis, Trinaldo, Hooker, all those guys. And it's like, damn, he's done. Last year, I thought he was done. Not so much. In 11 months, he's went three and one. Guida cracked him pretty well, but Miller just fired back dropped him, and applied a, a, a guillotine choke. And Guida was out a while. It's humbling to see Guida put out like that, man. That just... That ain't Clay Guida, man. When's, when's the last time you saw him get submitted? Like eight years ago? And I know there was a, a stretch back then where he got submitted a lot, but shoo, boy. This was humbling to see the ref just hold him up as he went limp. Damn, bro. That was that was rough. Clay Guida's going to still be around, man. He's like, you, you think the UFC's going to let him go because he's went win-loss, win-loss? Hell no. <laughs> he's going to be with the UFC for the foreseeable future. Jim Miller looked great. Good for him. Main event time, Colby Covington defeated Robbie Lawler. One-sided ass whipping this was. Uh, Donald Trump had tweeted his support. Uh, I'm not going to get political here. Uh, I don't really give a shit about that in relation to MMA and all that stuff. You all aren't here to hear my political thoughts. But the Trump brothers were in attendance, and boy, were they thrilled with uh, Colby Covington's performance. And you can say what you want about the politics, and like I said, I'm not getting into it. This is a giant rub for the UFC and Colby Covington. And let's not play dumb. The race aspect of Colby Covington and Kamaru Usman will play a huge role in that fight. For better or for worse. Now, 
I, I just want to say this. I'll put this out there, and I don't want to expose the people from American Top Team that told me this, but the, there were a couple of people from American Top Team that told me in confidence that they feel that this entire Covington thing is an act, that he is working everybody, that he knows how to get attention, that he knows how to get get all that, and he's just working everybody. Hey, I mean, Dan Lambert's his manager. Dan Lambert knows pro wrestling. Colby Covington did pro wrestling. He was in Impact Wrestling two years ago. If that's the case, wh whether or not it's the case, whether he's working everybody or not, he got the goddamn president to tweet about him. Now, I realize that that ain't exactly a tough thing to do in this day and age. Uh, but he had the Trump brothers there sitting there going, five rounds to zero, buddy, thumbs up, holding their kids up at him. You don't think that he and the UFC are going to milk that for all they have? Oh, my God. that That's brilliant for the UFC. I can't really... Good for Colby Covington. Whatever, man. And and the fight's on. Him and Kamaru Usman. Kamaru Usman uh, sitting out there watching it all unfold. Now, Covington just dominated this fight. What do you want me to say about this fight? He, he had some masterful wrestling. I love the head positioning, forcing Lawler, if he were to get up, to have to drag Colby Covington up with him. That weight, it's very important. Covington won this fight at, at everywhere. Long distance range, medium range, clinch range, in the clinch, wrestling up against the cage, on the ground. It's just, it was all Colby Covington. Towards the end of the fight, Robbie Lawler uh, landed a couple punches, but Covington ate him. And that was it. And that's, that's goddamn impressive for Colby Covington. To be able to, to take a punch like that from a guy like that? Kobe Covington hasn't finished a guy in three years, Max Griffin. But he is putting together some kind of resume. Lawler, Dos Anjos, and Damian Maya over the last two years. Uh, hopefully we see this o Usman Covington fight a lot sooner than, than what we have been. I mean, Covington fought once last year and he's fought once this year. He never lost that UFC interim welterweight championship. So it is hard for me to call Usman an undisputed champion. And uh, it's just I, the only person who has found success against Covington, as Joseph Boza points out, is Warley Alves. And that was in like a minute and a half several years ago. And let me tell you, that fight ain't happening that way this, this, this anymore. Colby Covington's real good. You can like him. You can hate him. You can do whatever you want in that regard. The man is really good at MMA. Is he better than Kamaru Usman at MMA? Well, I don't know. Now, this is going to be a well-built fight. A very well-built fight. But I think this could quite possibly be one of the most boring championship fights in the history of the UFC. Kamara Usman, in his last nine fights, has one finish. Yuck. Yuck. Colby Covington came out to Kurt Angle's theme. He had said that the, the intent was uh, to get the you suck chance. He knows what he's doing. It's uh, it's it's a smart move. <laughs> So right now, uh, Josh Charbonneau says they're going at it on the post show right now, being held by security. Can't wait to check that out. Of course, you're going to have all kinds of coverage over at FightfulMMA.com. Reminder, every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Fightful.com, FightfulMMA.com, the Fightful MMA podcast, hot dog. Robbie Lawler, uh, no intent to hang it up based on, on his comments after the fight, and hey, he got blown out of the water, but he didn't get finished. If he got finished, yeah, sure, whatever. Maybe maybe start to throw that down. But Joseph Boza says, sure, Sean and Showdown Joe will react to the cyborg mess. I kind of did. I've said this over and over again, and I'm going to really hammer it home on Tuesday. I've been saying this over and over again. 
Chris Cyborg's management is counterproductive. And I know who the hell her management is. It's her fiance, Ray Elby or whatever it is, blocks everybody that criticizes her, then spams every media outlet that, does, that doesn't criticize her or that he just doesn't pay attention to with links. He puts a bunch of spam links on her social media, has her go into the performance center uninvited, runs stories on her social media that are not true, has people on her production team edit a bunch of shit. Okay, listen, you can call Dana White an asshole in this situation. Sure, I'll buy it. The things that he has said about Cyborg looking like a man in the past, shitty. Shitty. But you you all also can't pretend to tell me that if a fighter wanted a bunch of cake fights, she wanted to fight Pam Sorensen and Cindy Dandois, they wanted her to fight Amanda Nunes. Then that production team butchered something trying to make Dana White look like a liar. It ain't that tough to make him look like one. Amanda Nunes won that fight in a, in a minute and a half. I, I really like, really like uh, Cyborg fighting again after that, but I, I'll go off on that on Tuesday. Rob in the chat says, I see Cyborg going after UFC White and Rogan in a defamation lawsuit. That ain't happening. I guarantee you that doesn't happen. Remember, uh, a reminder, guys, leave a thumbs up, subscribe. Until next time, we are out.